Hey, welcome back, Dr. Drains. We're here in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And we're with Apple Drains of North Carolina. So what we've got is we've got a lot of water coming underneath this customer's fence. So we're gonna put a 12 by 12 catch basin. And what we wanna do is we wanna catch that initial bunch of rainwater that comes in. So nothing from underneath, all on top. So with the water, it all comes down. You can see it's already got a kind of a trench they've already, the water's already made. So we're gonna come down this line here. I'm gonna come down and we're also going to put a smaller nine by nine catch basin right here. And if Sarah will pan over to the left of this house, this is the customer's downspot of what's been happening. The waters have just been rolling down. So this is a natural low spot here. So we'll catch that. And while we're here, we're going to take this downspout. It's underground here somewhere. You can see my fancy yellow line or white line. And we're just going to collect it all. From here, it's already cleaned out to the street. We were here. Uh, last week when we did some gutter cleaning and now we're coming back um, doing a couple extra projects for the customer. So what we've done is Sarah will come down here look in the hole. We've taken the we've taken this sod off the top because when we put it back we want it to look really pretty. Here's where our 9x9 nine nine catch basin is going to go. So we were we knew we were close. We went ahead and excavated out right here. So we're going to go ahead and clean this out a little bit with our fancy little spoon shovel. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we have enough room to cut our fitting in. And then we're also, we're able to seal it. That is gonna be really important because we don't wanna just dig a super shallow hole and then come under here and not seal it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut about 18 inches around here. I'm also gonna go underneath the edges here so when we cut our T in here, we can run our tape all the way under there and all the way under there. Now, as we come up, this will be our catch basin. We'll just clean this out. If you notice, we're trying to put all of our dirt in the, in the barrel here because that's wet clay and that is a mess. And you can see we pulled the side off. Robert's up here working away. Our 12 by 12 catch basin will go here and then we're gonna lay our four inch pipe all the way through here. All right, be right back with you. If you work your way backwards, Robert's working up there, working his way backwards. So we really like this shovel here because it's got the place where you can push your foot. It's short and it's really strong. It's all steel. There's no carbon or aluminum or any of that nonsense in there. It's an all steel handle. So you come up and put a little, a little weight in it and that I've got sparingly. We run into some gravel, you cut down, and you dig. And what you do, here's my spoon, there it is. Once you've dug the trench for the cleanup, it's really easy. You take your little spoon, because it only has to be about five or six inches wide, and you just work your way down. And if you find a spot, this one we may have to clean up a little bit here. We just want it wide enough to get that pipe in there. Remember, it's a four inch corrugated pipe, but they were measured about four and a half inches across. And we'll just make our way down to the pit. We will make sure that we've got our fall. And we'll do this all the way up. And then we'll come back to you. What we've run into is some white clay. This stuff's so aggravating. You can't get a shovel through it. The excavator struggles with it. When you're doing a small trench like this, the only way is to get you this tool. You can buy them at Lowe's, Home Depot. Get one with a little bit of weight to it. So you straddle the trench. And of course, we already know there's no wires in here. We verify that. You straddle the trench. You hear that? That's how hard this stuff is. And you just keep pulling it up as you go. But well, I'm going to tell you something. This white clay will make a fat man work. I'm going to tell you right now. So I'm going to eat me a couple of cheeseburgers today because I'm going to lose too much weight. I'm trying to keep my slim figure. But this is a workout. Don't let nobody fool you. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to tee this in. We're going to have this pipe coming right here. So you want to measure enough for the pipe to go in right here on the sides. You want to take your sawzall and cut it through 
all the way through the solid pipe. Both sides. And we made sure there's no wires here, so we're safe. We're not cutting any wires. We're just cutting straight through the solid pipe. All right. I'm gonna remeasure this other side. All right, so now we've cut our section of our pipe out for our T. Now we wanna dig around so we can make sure we're able to tape and make sure it's sealed underground. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And we're just digging out around so that way we can get underneath the pipe. So what Robert's doing is really important. You brought your shovel, Robert. Yes, sir. A lot of companies will not do this. This takes extra time. What we do on every solid pipe is we're gonna dig around it we're gonna hook it on there, and then we're gonna put our PVC pipe on. If you don't do that, roots have a tendency to try to sneak in through the cracks. So we try to seal the cracks up the best we can. So what I've asked Sarah and Robert to do is, there may be an occasional break. So that's just because uh, it's hard to upload long files. So what we're gonna do is I want you guys to see the ugly part of this job. Usually, what you'll see on YouTube Everything's clean and pretty, and that's after about 10 takes. We're doing this live. So if you're a DIY, and it takes you more than 10 minutes to do this, it's because it took the contractor to wait. Wait just a minute. It's because she's videoing me now. Ah, oh, hey, we're still here, it's okay. Uh, I want you to see what Robert's getting ready to do. It's because it takes a while to do this. It's not all pretty. I don't care how long you've been doing it. So don't be fooled by the YouTube uh, fakers. And we're going to actually take a little bit more off. All right, so you want to connect it. To one side. So that first side's in, then you just work the second side in. It's gonna be tight, but that's what we want. All right. So, we got the T in, now we're ready to tape it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna tape the PVC. Now what you don't wanna do is cut it too short. Boss didn't want this, but you know, no editing. Shh, don't tell him. It helps that I'm dating the boss's daughter. All right, so what we're gonna do though is we're gonna take our long piece of tape and we wanna get right over top of it all right all right and we want to squeeze that like this make sure that tape seals on there nice and tight all right so we got one side hooked up this side we're gonna cut it long enough Again, we're going to go around. Underneath. And we just really want this to seal nice and tight. We're going to squeeze it. Make sure that tape really sticks to that pipe once again. All right. This is a standard nine by nine catch basin. So I wanna show you, if you see this one right here is a little bit lower 
than this one. So the magic of this basin is it comes off. If you want it to be higher, you can put it in higher so it can be up. Or if you want it to be part way down, like we need it uh, a little bit lower. So like our situation here, Sarah will show you. What we're gonna have to do is here's where our pipe comes out. We're gonna have to move this over a little bit. We're gonna set our catch basin in. Now this fitting is gonna be lower than this fitting. So we'll trench this out and get it at night. But what we can do, we can set it in to where we catch the high water and deposit it in the low water just like that. So we will excavate this out a little bit more, turn our pipe a little bit, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so what we've done, well, what Sarah's done is uh, she has excavated this out. So what you wanna do is make sure that your fittings are gonna work. So what I've done here is I've cut a short piece of connector so it will fit in here. So you wanna slip it on and it's gonna fit right in there like that. So we'll take this up and obviously we're gonna level this out. Most importantly, you wanna make sure this is gonna have the right angle. So what Sarah has done here is she has turned this to when our pipe comes down and we'll clean this out here. It's gonna snap right on there. So now what we can do is you wanna do as much work outside the trench as possible because it's easier. Smarter, not harder, right? Learned that somewhere in the Army. The Marines don't teach that. They teach harder and harder. Harder and harder. Harder and harder. Robert is a, yeah, there you go. You know what he is. <laughs> so you wanna go ahead and tape it on there, get it good and tight. You should seal it up. Now, when we put this on, uh, I'm not gonna do it right now because we wanna level out a little bit. We're gonna slide it back in there. Sarah will come over here. This connector right here to here. It'll slide all the way to the edge. So we're gonna tape this whole section right here. And when we get this set into level, we'll come back and I'll show you us taping that. And if you notice, we've got room on the bottom here. So, you know, you guys know I use the reference to my Appalachian American friends. We're gonna have, is it Jim Bob and Cletus? Bubba and Cletus. Bubba and Cletus, thank you. Bubba and Cletus are gonna put a piece on the top, makes it look like it's wrapped all the way around. It's not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a complete wrap. I'm gonna show that to you. Uh, we're gonna run our pipe. We'll show you the connections. And we're also gonna show you the level on these, how to check the level, because you don't want it cattywampus like that. Um, so we're looking good, we'll get back to you. All right, we're back, sorry, Cardio. <laughs> so uh, no video editing tricks, I mean that. So it's best if you have some tape, just put some extra tape on it. Uh, tape is cheap. Sarah's gonna cut uh, towards herself, which I did not teach Sorry. her. <laughs> She's gonna put another piece on there. Just overlap. Try to keep the mud off of the tape as much as possible. Um, it's, it's hard to do in a hole like this, but we did leave extra room underneath. Thank you for the assist, Robert. Absolutely. So Sarah has got that wrapped up and that is tight. Now we're gonna have Robert come in here and show us how to level this and tell us why we have the depth where it's at. All right, so we got our four inch pipe coming from our basin down there, coming into this basin. So it's gonna flow through here. Once it fills up enough to here, it's gonna go into the T and shoot out to drain, just like we want. So what have you got there, Robert? Let's lay right. that flat so we can see that bubble. All right, so this is a our little level. All right, and we got a little bit of fall towards the T, which is what we want, just so the water has direction. And, and that's a great point. We can do this absolutely flat. Oh, we can pitch it a little bit. We like to pitch it. It helps drain the box a little bit. You can put it on there flat as well, no problem. And what about the other way, Robert, left or right? Mm -hmm. All right, we got a little adjustment here. Yep. This adjustment you want perfectly level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some dirt. We're gonna level it out and then we're gonna pack around it. We're gonna most importantly pack under here and under here. If you don't pack underneath this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna settle. And we've got it about an inch below, maybe half an inch below gray. So the water's gonna come down and it's gonna absorb into this. So uh, I'm gonna let these two play in the dirt for a while and we'll be right back. We're back at our 12 by 12 catch basin. The reason I really like this catch basin, can I see that Robert? Yes sir. Most catch basins don't have filters. Now I do have filters for the, our nine by nine. So again, we're getting the USD card. This one's giving us some problems. So this is a standard park, S-T-A-N-D-A-R-T-P-A-R-K. 
Just Google them on Amazon, it's where I buy them at. But this basket is really nice. Um, you slide it in there, and as the leaves and debris get in, they'll come into the basket and it'll fill up. So you can literally, the customer can pop this off, knock it all out, pop it back in. So Robert's gonna put the cover on. And we don't screw the covers down, there's no reason for that. Um, then he's gonna take his little handy, and what we've got is it's a little bit off, we'll fix that right there. And Robert has got to set up to where it's pitching down a little bit. Now, you can put this in absolutely level if you wish. Uh, we just got a tiny little bit of pitch there, so it'll pitch it, it'll pitch it down out. So what we'll do is we'll adjust our trench to match this depth. And again, we're just below grade. All the water is gonna come out right there from the neighbor's house. It's gonna come in here and it's going down, it's going down to the street. All right, thank you. Before we cover this up, I wanted to show you how we did this. So down here, you see our catch basin, and we put a T in there, and everything is pitched correctly, so the water's going downhill. We stepped it down into the trench all the way to the top. We're getting ready to tape up there at the top, and we've dug this to where if you look down in here, we've got the, the sod is about four inches, so what we're gonna do, so we're gonna push it in the trench, we're gonna backfill just to the crown, just to the top of that right there. Then we're gonna push it down in, step on it, make sure it's in there. Then we're just simply gonna take the sod and set it back on top, it's gonna look great. So you know the job's about done when I get my supervisor's mug out. This is me walking around, sipping on some coffee, doing a little supervisor. Mmm, the taste of a finished job. So what we've got here is our nine by nine basin. We wide in from the downspout. And we're going to, it goes underground. So the downspout hooks up here, goes that way. We've got our basin, it comes up. And if you notice, we put all the side back. One good rain, you won't be able to see any of this. And we have our 12 by 12 here. Now this 12 by 12, so you're gonna catch all this water coming underneath this customer's fence on this side and this side. Uh, it's gonna go right down in there. And then anything that doesn't, maybe if it comes from the hill, or what the customer was definitely worried about was his neighbor's downspout. That water is going to come right down here. You see the bare spot. It's going to come right down. It's going to hit this low spot and go right there. So what it's going to do, it's going to keep the water away from this customer's house. He's had some water issues. He's going to have a mason come back and uh, block all these off because he's got an encapsulated crawl space. So that's going to keep all the water out of the customer's house. So another job well done.